Okay, pay attention please. Hello everyone, thank you for coming to today's GIS talk. My name is Go Kil Hyun, today's GIS talk host. I am honored to be here as today's host. Before we get started, please turn off your cell phone or put it on silent mode. Okay, thank you. Now let me introduce you to Nathan Ferguson, today's GIS talk speaker. Okay, so um, his GIS talk is entitled Program for Big Program. And he'll explain about procedure from beginner to expert and talk about why all the people should learn about programming skills. And we have second talks. And second GIS talk speaker is Salah Kim. And from BLLA, her GIS talk is entitled The Tactility of Memory. She'll talk about Incidental things happen every day, which give many learnings and experience. Okay, when you first arrive, you should have received a piece of paper like this one. Oh my, I, I didn't have it. Okay, you are welcome to write down your questions on them. Then Nathan Ferguson will answer your questions of during our Q&A portion, led by me. Now, without any further hesitation. Please let us all welcome today first speaker Nathan Purvis with a big applause of okay, big round of applause. Yeah. My name is Nathan Fulkerson. Uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. My talk is Program for Reprogrammed. I'll talk a little about what that means later. Um, when I first thought about doing this talk, I uh, imagined that I'd get up here and um, at my school, my students call me Steve Jobs' teacher because they think I resemble Steve Jobs. So when I thought first about doing this, program, I was going to come up here in a turtleneck, but the weather outside today, way too hot for a black turtleneck, so here I am. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So, as I said, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, my major, so kind of about this talk, I'm going to explain why everybody should learn a little bit of programming. And most people, they think computer programmer, and they think something really complicated and difficult. And it can be, but if you notice, my major was English literature. I read Shakespeare and Beowulf and wrote papers about poems and English books. I have no computer science background whatsoever. Um, and I've been studying about three years computer programming on my own. Uh, I'll talk about where I learned those things. Uh, my love of math, zero. Uh, <laughs> when I was in high school, I had a choice. Basically, I had only two dreams in my head. I could become 
an English teacher or a computer programmer because I really loved computers and I really loved English. Thing was, uh, I was really, really terrible at math. And the thought of having to study four more years of math and science subjects in university scared me away from any science or technical field, so I became an English teacher. Um, video games and making video games. Uh, when I was really young, there were some simple programs for making really simple games. And I tried to put things together, but nothing, nothing worth sharing. And I kind of put that on the shelf and forgot about it, got into writing and English, obviously. Um, but that kind of changed when I was in university, um, that was about the time that Apple announced the iPhone and the, the iPod Touch. And my dad actually got a hold of an iPod Touch. And I was so entranced by it because you know you had all these little apps, you can do all these little silly games and things like that. And I found, oh, like you can make these apps with Apple software. So I thought, I'm going to learn how to do that. And well, about three years in the university of trying to learn on my own, I found it was still really kind of complicated. So I kind of put it away again until I got here to Korea. And then uh, in my free time, I started picking up programming again. And now I'm actually getting somewhere that I feel like I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to show you that. I mean, a lot of All right, there we go. Uh, next slide, please. So, why should you learn? Uh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, so, first example, this is a freelance listing from a website. Uh, so, people will post on job boards, uh, I want to build this thing so I need a programmer, I need a developer. And I don't know if you're familiar with Airbnb. It's a website you can, instead of booking a reservation at a hotel or a hostel, you can actually, some people will share their apartment. They have a spare room in their apartment or they're going away on vacation. So they'll rent their house to travelers. So someone on one of these websites said, I want a website exactly like Airbnb. My budget is $200. If you have a great idea, like you want the next Facebook, you want Twitter, you want uh, Neighbor, something like that. If you don't have a lot of money, you're not going to be able to, unless your idea is really, really great, you're not going to be able to convince people to build that website for you unless you can prove it will really make money. So, first reason you could learn programming, if you have a lot of ideas and you don't have a lot of money, you should invest your energy in learning to program so you can build your idea because you believe that is a good idea. You won't convince people to do it for you without lots of money or lots of time. Uh, second reason is job enhancement. So maybe you don't want to be a programmer. Uh, right now I'm a teacher. And so there are still things you can learn how to do that will make your job easier and better. Basically, anything that you do at home or in work that you have to do a lot of small, repetitive, again and again tasks, you can make your computer do it for you. Um, 
which I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, so at my job, uh, if you're a teacher or seen English teachers work, uh, in my classroom we play a lot of interactive games. And we actually use PowerPoint to play those games. But PowerPoint isn't made for making games. It's for showing things like this, not very interactive. So you can learn how to build something suited to that purpose. So um, can you bring up that first image? The automation. Uh, maybe we're going to have more. Okay, yeah. So, uh, just in any case, um, I showed a, or I have an image I'll show you later. Um, when I talk about repetitive tasks, my computer is really messy. I download a lot of files. And I don't organize them. I just, I need this file right now. I'm going to download it, do what I need, and get on with that. And then later I download another file, and another file, and another file, until there are 500 files in my downloads folder. And I don't know what any of them are. So uh, I wrote a program for my computer. And it looks in my downloads folder. And it moves each file into their own folder. Microsoft Word documents go into a document folder. PowerPoints go into a PowerPoint folder. PDF books go to a PDF folder. And then I can actually find those things more easily. Um, if you work in a science field or you have to do a lot of Excel spreadsheets, uh, if you're doing something where you're constantly having to click here and click there and do something again and again, again, you can actually tell your program or tell your computer to do that for you and then you make your work easier uh, next week. Uh, yeah I talked about this basically you can make your life easier by finding things that you have to do again and again and again uh, and have your computer do them for you and I'm going to show you another really funny example of that here in a moment so, another reason to learn computer programming. Do uh, you know what this is? This Google car? Yeah, it's a Google car, and Google cars drive themselves. They don't need a driver. So, something that a lot of experts talk about now is how uh, within the next 30 years, they expect perhaps 40 or 50% of all jobs can be automated. A computer can do our jobs for us. The most best example is this Google car. Instead of taxi drivers, a company can make a bunch of self-driving cars. They can make an app that says, hey, I want to ride. The Google car drives to your house, picks you up, takes you where you want to go. There's no need for a taxi driver anymore. Uh, delivery companies, again, self-driving car could do that. Uh, a lot of finance information, analyzing stock market, computers do that for the stock broker. Stock brokers don't do that anymore. So, if 40 or 50 percent of jobs are done by computers in 30 years, then you should be the one programming those computers, writing that software that makes this thing work. But automation, computers doing work for you is not all bad. Um, first of all, teachers and professors, uh, counselors, tour guides, those things, they need a human person still to do. Those aren't going anywhere. Um, but I have a story, I found a news article back in November. A programmer had left his job and his coworkers found some files on his work computer. This guy basically didn't want to waste any of his time. So anything that he had to do again and again, 
he wrote a special program for it. So on his computer, they found a file. It was called Brew Coffee. And what they found out was that the coffee machine at their workplace was actually com connected to the internet, to their network. No one knew that except him. So he had a program on his computer. He would push a button, and it would wait 24 seconds, and it would start brewing a cup of coffee exactly how he liked it. 24 seconds was how much time it took him to go from his desk to the coffee machine. So instead of getting up, walking to the coffee machine, making his cup of coffee, he had his computer do it for him. He also had a program that if he was late at work past 9 p.m., it would automatically send a text to his wife explaining, oh, I'm going to be late, and it would pick a random reason why he was late at work. So he, he basically took every little thing that, that he would do in his life and made a program for it. So how do you learn? Uh, how I learned primarily is online. Uh, I'm wearing a code school shirt. Um, all these programs have online interactive videos and lessons on how to learn anything from web design to game design to making a server. Um, they have a really well-developed curriculum and many of them are free. Others are really cheap, maybe $20 a month for Imana. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's certainly much cheaper than a college education in this, but uh, on the downside, you have to basically be self-motivated. If you, you know, buy this service, but you're not studying regularly, you're not going to learn. Also, you have teachers that are recording these videos, but you're not speaking face to face with a person that can explain, I don't understand this, how does this work? You have to rely on, again, people on the internet to tell you how to do it. Another, I'm not sure exactly what resources are available in Korea, but in the United States there is something called a code boot camp, so like an army camp. Kind of. You go, you go, this is not a university program, but you pay something like university tuition. You get accepted into this program, and you work 60, 70 hours a week learning how to program, learning how to make websites, how to build apps. And you know, at these places, you get more personal attention. There are Teachers who have worked as computer professionals, they work as programmers, web designers, and if you have questions, you don't understand something, they'll be able to tell you, well, this is what you're doing wrong, here's how to fix this, and you also have other students studying with you, so you can go to them and say, help me out with this, and they'll help you. Uh, the problem is, again, you might be working 40, 60, 80 hours a week, which to me sounds really extreme. Uh, the cost is almost as much as university tuition, and because they are not university programs, uh, they might offer some scholarship, but you can't get assistance for these programs. And because they are not a university program, you're not going to get a university degree. So, at least in Korea, I know that to get a job as a computer developer, if that's what you want to do, they're still going to look at what university you went to. In USA, uh, they follow kind of the Steve Jobs or Bill Gates formula. Both were college dropouts. They didn't finish school. So if you can do the work, you can have the job. But uh, there's also, you can learn from professionals, uh, there's a website, CodePen, if you're interested in web design, 
then there are many designers who put their examples on this website. You can see how that code works. You can play with it and change it and see what effect it has. And there are a lot of interesting designers that show off um, skills. Maybe I'll be able to show you. I, in CodePen, actually was able to design the Korean flag using only HTML, so uh, website language. And there's also GitHub, which is where programmers put their code so that if they make changes or it gets deleted, they can rewind and download it again. And so things like, uh, maybe not Facebook, but you can see more complicated programs or examples here. And you can dig through the code and see how, how it was made, how it works, and actually take it and change it to your need. Um, if you're curious, if you really wanted to learn programming, many people would ask, what language do I learn? Because just like human languages, there are many, many, many computer languages too. Um, what I have here first is, this one is called Python, Ruby, Swift, and JavaScript. Python and Ruby are almost like human language. If I want the computer, for example, I want it to say hello five times. I say five dot times do say hello and and the computer will say hello five times. So it's almost like an English sentence when you look at this. There's no complicated grammar or any structure to it. Um, so these first two, Python and Ruby, are really easy to learn for beginners. Uh, they're not complicated. They almost sound like English. Uh, these are used mostly for web, web and online projects. Swift is a language used by Apple. So if you wanted to make an Apple iPhone or iPod app, this is the language that they want you to use. Fortunately, it, a little like Python and Ruby, is fairly simple, just a little more complicated because of the, the hardware that it's using. And last, if you want to make websites, if you want to make something like Facebook or Twitter, uh, maybe if you have any familiarity with computers, you've heard JavaScript. JavaScript is the language you want to learn. And my last bit of advice, if you want to learn computer programming, is this. Don't be a magpie. If you know what a magpie is, it's a kind of bird that's attracted to shiny things. And this is what I was when I started learning. Uh, a magpie, as a programmer, is somebody who they see a computer language or a computer program, they're interested in it because it's new and shiny. So they begin studying it. But technology now moves really fast. So maybe three months later, there will be a new shiny thing. So instead of studying what you started, you move to the next new shiny thing. And then another new shiny thing comes. And so you change your attention again. So what happens is you never really learn anything. You're just moving from one thing to another thing to another thing without actually learning. So if you want to learn, pick one language. Choose what you want to do. I want to make an app. I want to make a website. I want to make uh, finance software. Choose something and then find the tool that will help you and then stay with it. When you've learned it, you can change. You can learn a new language. They're all very similar when you understand the, the concept behind them. Uh, my last advice too, it's good to stay current. Uh, many programmers, 20 years ago, they learned how to make HTML websites and used Flash animation 
for their website. And so 20 years later, Flash is almost gone in Korea it's, and uh, some parts of the world there's still emphasis on Flash, but many web browsers are saying it's dangerous, we need to get rid of it because many viruses come through Flash. So uh, modern web browsers, Internet Explorer 11, Firefox, all these things, they use other ways of doing that. So you need to stay up to date, but you don't want to just change the next new thing, new thing, new thing. Stay with something and focus on it. I think, uh, unless we can get the pictures up, uh, or actually, can we pull up the, yeah, pull up the picture first if we can. Otherwise, we can move to Q&A. So this is the first example I talked about. This is a program I made that organizes my messy downloads folder. So I have several hundred files in my downloads. I made a program. I just type organize downloads, and soon you'll see documents here will start showing up. See, it's moved all of my Microsoft Word documents into a folder for Microsoft Word documents. And now my folder is less messy. So, um, here's the rock, paper, scissors. Okay, this is another example of something I built. So, uh, I'm a big fan of Apple. Uh, I have an Apple phone, I have an Apple Watch. Um, I wanted to learn how to make iPhone apps. So, as a simple example, and also to impress my students, uh, everyone at my school loves rock, paper, scissors. So, I made a rock, paper, scissors app for my watch. All you can do is basically flip through. You can pick rock, paper, scissors, and press a button. And the computer will choose rock, paper, or scissors. And it will tell you, you win, or you lose, or you tie. So it's really simple, but it's an example of something you can do. And last, uh, I made a, this is my most recent project. I made a game. Uh, this is a really simple arcade game. Um, so you can go ahead and click play. So <laughs> you can play this in your web browser, but also the program I used to build this, I can make this work on a Windows PC. I can make it work on a Mac computer or a web browser. So when I talk about job enhancement, uh, again, I use a lot of interactive games in my lessons at school. Uh, so I have been learning this program so that I could help make games or educational games to use in my lessons that are more easy to use than using PowerPoint. So uh, this game, certainly not educational, but it's a step in my learning process. If you're going to learn, start simple. Uh, this is an old arcade game. If I wanted to make games, I wouldn't start with something very complicated like a 3D action game. I would start simple and old. Uh, yeah, so.
if there are questions.